Hello and welcome to a video on angles on parallel lines. So down here we've got one pair of parallel lines and how do I know that these two lines are parallel? Well it's these chevrons that give it away. So whenever you see these chevrons or these or arrows you will know that those two lines are always parallel. And we've also got this line that cuts right through these parallel lines and this also has a name. So this line here, this is called a transversal. And now we've got the terminology out of the way, let's focus on some angles. And the first one I'm going to look at is this angle here. So we don't know what this angle measures. We would have to get a protractor out and measure it um, by hand. But let's just say for argument's sake that this angle is 60 degrees. Now, based on this angle, we can actually calculate all of these angles in our diagram. So we can calculate those three angles and these four angles just based on this 60 degree angle. So first angle I'm going to look at, I think, is going to be this angle down here. So how do we calculate this angle? Well, because we've got a straight line, we know that angles on a straight line sum to 180 degrees. So we can just take 60 degrees away from 180 and that gives us 120 degrees. Now, if we focus on this angle, I can do exactly the same thing. So we know that these two angles sum to 180. So if this is 120, well, this angle here must be 60 degrees. And finally, this one up here, we just do exactly the same thing. It doesn't matter which line we use. We could use this line or this line. But either way, this is going to be 120 degrees. So now we've calculated all of these angles. Let's look at these ones down here. Now, in order to calculate these, we're going to have to use some angle properties, which I've listed on the left hand side down here. And the first one I'm going to look at is corresponding angles. So if we go back and focus on this angle that we started with, we can see that this is 60 degrees. Now, if I look at this angle down here, well, this angle is also 60 degrees. So this one is also 60 degrees. And how do I know that? Well, these two angles are corresponding angles. And corresponding angles are always equal. So these two angles correspond with each other. If I focus on this angle here, this 120 degree angle, well that corresponds with this angle. So this one is also going to be 120 degrees. If I focus on this 120 degree angle up here, well that corresponds with this angle, so that's going to be 120 degrees. And finally, this 60 degree angle, well that corresponds with this angle, so this is going to be 60 degrees. So we've looked at corresponding angles and we know that corresponding angles are always equal. Now let's take a look at vertically opposite angles. So when we're talking about vertically opposite angles, let's say we've got this 60 degree angle. Well, this one over here, well, that is vertically opposite. You can see that these two angles are opposite one another and vertically opposite angles are also equal. Now, what other types of angles on our diagram are also equal? Well, we've got this 60 degree angle here and this 60 degree angle here, we can see that these two are also equal and these are called alternate angles. And I've just tried to make it a bit clearer with this highlighting here, sort of got a Z shape going on. But this angle, 60 degrees, notice it's on the alternate side of this transversal. So it's on the left hand side of this transversal. This is on the right hand side. So that's where we get the name alternate from. But you can see that these two angles are equal. And just like if we look at the 120 degree angle, so this one on the right hand side, well, that is equal to this one on the left hand side. So these two will also be alternate. And now the final type of angles we're going to look at are co-interior angles. So on our diagram, an example of some co-interior angles will be this one here and this one here. So notice they are interior to our parallel lines. So again, I've just tried to make it a bit clearer with my highlighting here, drawing this in, that we can see that these two angles are co-interior and notice they sum to 180 degrees. So that will be the case for all co-interior angles. So if we look at the left hand side, so this angle here, the 60 degree angle, well, that is co-interior to this angle and they also sum to 180 degrees. So I'm just going to finish off with a quick summary just to go through these four types of angles again. So the first one's vertically opposite angles. We can see they're quite easy to remember just because they're opposite one another and they will always be equal. So this angle here will be equal to this angle. Uh, we can see that this angle would be equal to this angle and this angle will be equal to this angle. They're just opposite one another. We've got corresponding angles, which are also equal. And the easy way to remember this is because they correspond with each other in terms of their position. 
So this is the top right hand corner of this quadrant. Well, that corresponds with the top right hand corner of this quadrant. So if we focus on this angle, well, that's the top left hand corner. Well, that co corresponds with the top left. Um, if we choose the bottom left, well, that one will equal that one down there. And finally, the bottom right will equal the bottom right down here. So now the alternate angles, again, they're also equal. And the way I remember this is because they are on alternate sides of our transversal. So this is our transversal here that we spoke about that cuts through our parallel lines. Well, this is on the right hand side and this is on the left hand side. So again, this this angle here, well, that's on the left hand side. So that's going to be equal to this angle down here. And finally, we've got our co-interior angles, which sum to 180 degrees, and they are always interior to our parallel lines. So it doesn't affect these ones up here or these ones down here. It's always, it's always the interior angles. So again, this angle here and this angle will also sum to 180 degrees. So hopefully you found that useful. In the next video, we're just going to put this into practice. Um, so we can actually have a go at calculating some missing angles using these properties. So hopefully I will see you then. Take care.